Let's talk about wireless technology. Wireless communication technology. So wireless network is a computer network that uses wireless data transfer between network devices. Wireless networks generally use radio communication to transmit data. Wireless networks can include wireless local area networks or WLANs, mobile networks, satellite networks, microwave networks. Wireless transmission media are used when it's, con in, when it's inconvenient, impractical or impossible to install cables. The faster speeds afforded by the 802.11ax standard place wireless connections on a par with wired networks in terms of speed. Wireless transmission media used in communications include broadcast radio, cellular radio, microwaves, communication satellites and infrared. Let's look at this table here. Transfer rates of various wireless transmission media and these are the transfer rates. Gee, there's quite a difference between 2G, for example, and 5G. Huge difference. In fact, there's a massive difference between 4G and 5G. Let's keep going. Wi-Fi communications. For Wi-Fi communication transmissions, you need a transmitter to send the radio signal and a receiver to accept it. To receive the signal, the receiver has an antenna that is located in the range of the signal. Some networks use a transceiver, which both sends and receives signals from wi wireless devices. Wi-Fi communication is slower and more susceptible to noise than physical transmission media, but it provides flexibility and portability. Wireless computer network components typically use radio signals in either a 2.4 GHz range or a 5 GHz range. We said that before. A 5 GHz network can carry more data than a 2.4 GHz network. However, the higher the frequency of a radio signal, the shorter the range. So a 2.4 GHz network covers a much larger range than a 5 GHz network, even though it's slower. The higher frequency is not as good as penetrating objects or obstacles such as walls. On the other hand, there are a number of household devices such as cordless phones that operate on the 2.4 GHz band and that could interfere with a broadcast transmission at that frequency. The 5 GHz band does not compete with other common household devices. A number of components now come with a dual band capability to get the best of both worlds. For example, if you've got a, a Wi-Fi extender at home or something like that, you might notice that you can choose between the, the two settings, the 5 gigahertz or the 2.4 gigahertz. I'd be curious to know which you find to be the most successful, because I still can't decide which is the most successful in my house. Bluetooth. So Bluetooth uses short-range radio waves to transmit data along Bluetooth-enabled devices. These devices contain a small chip that allows them to communicate with other Bluetooth-enabled devices. Examples of such devices are desktop personal computers, notebook computers, handheld computers, mobile phones, fax machines and printers. Fax machines? Who even has a fax machine anymore? Anyway, to communicate with one another, they must be within a specific or specified range, about 10 metres, but the range can be extended to 100 metres with additional equipment. Have you ever had that thing where you've, you've got your Bluetooth speakers in your ear or earphones and you have your phone sat down somewhere and you go to another room and you don't, you've forgotten that your phone's not with you and the whole signal starts breaking up? It happens to me all the time. Anyway. A popular use of Bluetooth is to enable hands-free chatting on mobile phones or to play music through speakers or in the car. Most new cars now are sold with Bluetooth built in. Should I say, are now sold with a, with a built-in Bluetooth station that the user can synchronize with their mobile phone. Bluetooth and Wi-Fi communications technologies use radio signals. Who would have thought? Near field communication. What's that, you might say? Well, you've probably heard of NFC. NFC technology is a form of contactless communication between devices such as smartphones and tablets. A user is able to wave their smartphone over an NFC-compatible receiver to send information without needing to touch the devices together or set up a formal connection. In this way, it is possible to pay for goods purchased in stores or pay for a parking meter. The parking meter can even send messages to the smartphone indicating how much time is left. Have you ever seen those? Hmm, I haven't. An unpowered chip called a tag 
can be used with an NFC device such as a smartphone with NFC capability. The tag uses electromagnetic induction to draw its power from the device that reads it. A smartphone can be paired with an NFC tag which can be programmed by apps on the phone to automate tasks. For example, tapping a smartphone on a smart tag contained in a poster will transfer information from an embedded chip in the poster onto the smartphone. In this way, a user tapping a movie poster will receive on their smartphone comprehensive details about the film, such as session times, biographies of leading actors, reviews and more. I've never come across this, to be honest. Tapping on a menu in a restaurant could load the menu into the phone along with nutritional information and cooking notes, as if we don't spend enough time on our phones in restaurants as it is. NSC tags are small and cheap to produce, so are suited for a range of uses involving mobile payments and creative marketing. For more, uh, sorry, more interesting uses will emerge as people become more aware of the capabilities of NFC. Paywave transactions and Victoria's Mikey transportation system are examples of the use of cards with NFC. Waving the card near a card reader allows data to pass from the card to the reader and hence the transaction is completed with little effort and in almost no time. Microwaves, we're not talking about the one in your kitchen. Microwaves are radio waves that provide a high-speed signal transmission. Microwave transmission involves sending signals from one microwave station to another, like that. Microwaves use line of sight transmission, which means that microwaves must transmit in a straight line with no obstructions between microwave antennas. To avoid possible obstruction, such as buildings or mountains, microwave stations often sit on top of buildings, towers or mountains. Electromagnetic radiation, such as light and radio waves, travel almost as fast through the air as it does through a vacuum. This means that microwave communication is significantly faster than even fiber optic transmissions, which send laser light pulses down glass strands we've talked about before. The glass slows the light beam by 30 to 40 percent. Microwave trans transmission, however, is used in environments where installing physical transmission media is difficult or impossible, where the organization that will be using it occupies a large site and where, off where line of sight transmission is available. Communication satellites. Communication satellite is a space station that receives microwave signals from an Earth-based station. It amplifies or strengthens the signal and then broadcasts the signal back over a wide area to any number of Earth-based stations. Other devices such as handheld computers and GPS receivers can also function as Earth-based stations. Transmission from an Earth-based station to a satellite is an uplink. Transmission from a satellite to an Earth-based station is a downlink. A little note here, although satellite internet connections are more expensive than cable internet, they are still the only high-speed option in remote areas. Do you know anyone that has satellite connections for their house? Mobile communication technology. Oh, okay, we, we all know a lot about this one. A mobile network, also known as a cellular network, uses telecommunication networks to allow users to communicate using their mobile device. A mobile network consists of a number of mobile phone towers or base stations which send and receive signals. Data coverage of these mobile tower, phone towers often overlap, allowing users to stay connected to the network as they move around an area. The range of each mobile phone tower can vary depending on its location and the number of other towers located in the area. In large cities, each tower may only have a short range, two or three kilometers, but often these towers overlap with numerous others. In more isolated areas, the tower may have a larger coverage area, approximately 10 to 15, sorry, 10 to 50 kilometers, depending on the terrain. Users of mobile devices will connect to the nearest base station. Each base station is then connected to a digital exchange where the communication is sent over a wired network. So how about that? Your mobile phone uses wired technology. Mobile networks allow the user to send and receive voice, data, images and text messages. As most if not all mobile networks belong to a telecommunications organisation, there is usually a cost associated with transmitting data using these networks. And that's all we're going to cover for this video. So thanks for watching. Hope that was useful. Bye for now.